Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to come before your throne. Thank you for all that you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you will do momentarily. By your spirit and through the word, I thank you for the Holy Ghost who you have sent to indwell us, to be our teacher and to be our guide, to lead us and guide us in all truth and to unveil Jesus, the living word through the written word. I thank you for this message that you have given me and that we have been discussing for a little while. I know that it is in your heart to get this message over to your people. And it is in my heart to do so also. So I thank you for utterance in the Holy Ghost. I trust him to live big in me, to think through my mind, to speak through my lips, to make my tongue the pen of a ready writer that I may, have, that I may speak as the oracles of God in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Thank you for people having receptive hearts to receive and readiness of mind to receive. Thank you for what the word will do in us, for us, to us, and even through us as we yield in Jesus' holy name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Lift your Bibles with me. Say with me, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is God speaking to me. His purpose is to bless me, to change me, and to be glorified through my life. Therefore, I set myself in agreement with His Word by having a receptive heart and a readiness of mind to receive. And by being a doer of the Word I hear, not a hearer only. I realize that obedience to God's word is essential in order to have God's best for my life. Amen. We've been looking at, we've been discussing being led by the spirit of God. Last time we, we sort of made our Subtopic, the three primary ways the Spirit leads us. I said quite a bit, but we're going to still go back to the verses as we continue with the word today. The passages of Scripture that we use as our foundation for this lesson, or for these teachings. Romans 8.14 Job 32.8 and Proverbs 20.27. 20, Romans 8.14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Job 32.8 says, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. And Proverbs 20, 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. And the main thing that we was, I was trying to get over to you is that God guides by our insides. Amen. Now I want to go over something that I said to you before. I said that uh, some time ago the Lord told, spoke to me and said whenever you're in a situation where you do not know what to do, create an atmosphere that is conducive to me speaking and wait. This is what he said to me. And I said to you that 
God speaks in an atmosphere of praise and worship. So you should do that before you make your requests. Praise and worship quiets your mind and that's why you need to do it. It's, it's, it does something. It also stills the enemy. The devil can't stand praise. It stills him. But you will need to get your mind quiet before you will be in the position where you can hear. Now we understand that of the that there are three primary ways that God leads us. The inward witness, we talked about that. The inward voice, which is the voice of your own spirit. And then the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, but we still have to put ourselves in position and create an atmosphere conducive to God speaking to us. In, in Acts 13, 2, it says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said. As you minister to the Lord, how do we minister to the Lord? By praising, by worshiping. We are ministering to the Lord. Now, as you minister to the Lord, and sometimes with fasting, you also will be able to say, that the Holy Ghost said, or the Holy Ghost led you to do such and so. Now, it is from time to time very necessary for you to fast when you're seeking God. Because fasting is a means of denying the flesh the less influence your flesh has on you, the more sensitive you are to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God can very often move in such a miraculous and supernatural way because of this type of sacrifice. Now, I'm sharing with you, as I told you in the beginning, from my book, Determining Divine Direction, how to know when God is leading you. Now, I want to say something to you further. There is always the margin of error to consider when hearing from God. Now, I want you to get this. There is always the margin of error to consider when hearing from God. You may miss from time to time, especially when you're learning to follow his voice. How many of y'all ever found you missed it? Yeah. I'm going to share some things with you today that, that are kind of interesting. And sometimes people miss. But be careful if you miss not to get into spiritual pride, refusing to admit when you are wrong. And I've seen this a lot. I've seen this with ministers. I've seen it with people that were in our church. They, 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 they can't admit when they're wrong. I heard something the other day. Someone told me about somebody that was in our church at one time, was one of the ministers. He really got upset. And how do you know people are upset? Because when they get upset, they do a lot of talking. Now, what he was really upset about was I wouldn't send him out some kind of way. He felt like he was ready. And so he ran into one of our other people and, you know, just spilled everything. 
his feelings. He said that God put a word in my mouth. Well, he must have swallowed it. Because every time he opened his mouth, nonsense came out. So, then he got upset with the congregation. Every time I, the Lord put a word in my mouth, but every time I stand there preaching, speaking, which was only a few times, we could take but, but a few times anyway. Every time I speak, the people sit there and act like they don't know what I'm talking about. Well, maybe you sound like you don't know what you're talking about. They were upset with me. Pastor Holmes, he said, why people, why people keep speaking the same thing over and over, preaching the same thing? What, what are you talking about? Who are you talking about? All right, Pastor Holmes, preach the same thing over and over. He has exhausted the subject of healing. See, I exhausted the subject of healing. Then you ought to know it then. Trust me, beloved, I have not exhausted that subject. But that, see, that, that kind of attitude, and I'm not upset with anybody. I'm just telling y'all the, the, the truth about it. But that kind of attitude, see, people start saying things like, well, God put a word in. See, it's, it's, it's being misled. It's believing something about themselves that is not true. It's thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think that the Bible warns us about. And I, I thought when I, when I was told all that, I, I thought I said, I wonder if at, at the church he's going to now, does he say, did he tell that pastor, the Lord put a word in my mouth. And have the pastor get, get him up, put him up to preach. I'm not hearing nothing about him preaching. Well, because the pastor, if he heard him, wouldn't hear the same thing. And, and he would say the same thing, well, you must have swallowed it. Well, that pastor might not talk that way, but I do. You understand? But anyway, don't get lifted in pride when you, if you discover that you missed something. Instead, acknowledge your error so that you can correct it. We're talking about being led by the Spirit of God. This is a serious and important thing. And now it seems to me that in some situations, babes in Christ are keener and more sensitive when hearing from God than some that have been with the Lord for a long time. It seems that the ones that have been in Christ longer many times are affected by influences and experiences and have become dull of hearing. Now listen to this. Matter of fact, I, I, uh, I just recently, a couple of months ago, ordered a book about this, this, this man I'm about to tell you about. His name was Peter Cartwright. He was a, a preacher back in the 1800s in Texas. And I heard the story about Peter Cartwright. I heard Brother Hagin talk about it years ago. And I always had an interest. I wanted to learn about him. So I ordered, just a couple of months ago, I ordered the book, just got it. Well, I ordered it a couple of months ago. I've had it about a month now. But anyway, 
Listen to his experience. Peter Cartwright had this experience. Now he was again from, from Texas. And this is in the 1800s. He was a very tall man and he had a, a loud voice. He would talk loud. And one day the Lord spoke to him and told him, now listen to this, this is interesting. The Lord spoke to him and told him to go to the dance that the town was putting on. The town was putting on a dance. And he was praying and the Lord said, go to the dance. Now ordinarily, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't go. You wouldn't find him in such a place. But the Lord spoke to him. Now, you know, you have to prove everything. The Bible says, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. A lot of people make the mistake. The Lord told me we're too quick say, to say the Lord told me. The Lord told me. And I think some of us need to be a little more bold when people come to us and tell us that. To say, how you know it was the Lord? Because you'll get answers like, because I know. Now that's real smart, isn't it? Yeah, that's smart if stupid is smart. It makes no sense, because I know. Well, how do you know? Because I know. That's a dangerous position to be in. And I'm trying to help you not to fall into that mess. Praise God. I remember several years back, we had one brother in the church going around. He started going off into some strange beliefs and so forth. So he started saying some things. He tried to present something to me. I said, listen. I stopped him one day. I said, are you my teacher? He said, no, sir. Are you my, are you my pastor? No, sir. Are you my instructor? No, sir. So then why are you trying to teach me something? Well, that's, that shut that right down. That shut that down right there. Well, he had a, this belief that Adam was not with Eve when she was being tempted and so forth. And one day he said something to me about it. I said, he said, uh, I said, well, where was, was, where was Adam? Where was he? Somewhere fishing? Well, no, he said, well, no. He said, no. He said, but I don't believe he was with her. I said, prove it. And shut that down. See, people have a lot of mouth. But when you get them to tell them to prove it. Heck, I was with some ministers a few months ago, and we was having a, it was, it was just a group of ministers. We were having some discussions and so forth. It was a private thing. And one brother quoted a scripture, you know, he talked about Jesus and his hair and, and said his hair was, you know, the texture of his hair was sort of woolly. And this is, this is a, a teaching that come with people trying to say that, you know, Jesus was black and all, all of this. But anyway, there's, there's a group of people out there that, that, that are teaching that. And they're called the black Hebrew Israelites. And uh, my, 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 they are really, really, really mixed up. And this, this man happened to be somebody who had been in, who was into that. So when the discussion, something came up and I spoke up, I said, listen, preachers, when the Bible in Revelation talked about Jesus' hair, it wasn't talking about the texture of his hair. Besides that, Sheep 
don't have the same kind of hair as humans. We don't have sheep hair. Well, we have woolly hair. Really like sheep? I heard about a preacher, was up preaching, and one of the bishops, somebody sitting back behind him said, sit down, sit down. Your ignorance is showing. So I said to them, I said, that was talking about the color. I said, the Bible says his hair was as, wool, what, as wool, white like wool. So this young man said, well, let me talk about the texture too. I said, prove it. Now, what he looked like then, like, like a deer in headlights. You can't prove it. Stop saying stuff you can't prove. It's the same thing. People get carried away with this. The Lord told me, the Lord told me. But let's go back to Peter Cartwright. The Lord spoke to him and told him to go to this dance that the town was putting on. Now, of course, many today would have immediately dismissed it and said it wasn't God. However, God may tell you to do something that seems rather strange sometimes. But if it is God, it will always work out. And it will always bring him glory. Now, if it don't bring him glory and it don't work out, oops, you miss God. So he told the Lord that he would go, and he did. Now, when he got there, he stood up against the wall waiting. Because really, he didn't, he didn't know why he was there. He just knew the Lord spoke to him and said, go to the dance. He didn't dance. He didn't, do, he, don't, he, didn't, he don't even go to those kinds of places. But the Lord said, go to the dance. I'm talking about being led by the Spirit of God. So he just went. Eventually, while he was standing there, a young lady came up to him and asked him to dance. So he stepped out in the middle of the floor with the young lady. And he said with a loud voice, I don't do anything without praying first. So he took her by the hands and he started to pray. So they held hands in the middle of the dance floor. And he started to pray and began with these words, Lord, save these heathens. <laughs> All of a sudden, people started falling under the power. One after another, after another, after another, including the woman that he was holding hands with. Everybody fell. He looked up. Everybody was out under the power of God. All the dancing stopped. The dance shut down. Everything stopped because the people fell under the power of God all over the room. And, and everybody got saved that night. The dance closed down because of the manifestation of God's power and because God told this man to go. This is why we must understand and be sure of the leading. In another incident of hearing God, a group of Christians who were young in the Lord, these, was, these were babes in Christ really, and had recently been filled with the Holy Ghost. They decided to get together and pray because their church their church van had been stolen. They decided to get together and pray. They said, we're gonna, they wanted to test what they was hearing. They didn't know. So they, they just wanted to test some things. And they decided, hey, let's pray. And pray in, in, uh, about the van. 
And so they got to get together praying in tongues and seeking God about the situation. And while they were praying for a while, after a while they started asking one another if they, if they received anything. And one person spoke up and said, yeah, I received something, but it, but it's, but it seems kind of strange to me. They said, well, what is it? I heard inside to go to the baseball game, the local baseball game, not, not stadiums, you understand, local baseball park, go to the baseball game. Now, why would God be telling them to go to the baseball game? They were not baseball fans. They were not into baseball or anything. But they went. They said, well, let's just go check it out. It doesn't matter if we're wrong, we're just wrong. We're just trying to find out how this, how this works. They went to the baseball game and were sitting up in the bleachers. And eventually, while sitting in the bleachers, Somebody noticed something parked, hidden in the bushes. They could see it from where they were sitting in the, on, on the bleachers. And it was the stolen van. Now they were willing to prove out this leading, whether it was God or not, rather than assume. A lot of people assume, and they quick that the Lord told me, the Lord killed me. But they they didn't want to assume. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. The word prove here means to put to the test. When testing something out, take baby steps. Did you hear what I said? When testing something out, take baby steps, not giant steps. When you feel like you're being led to do something, take baby steps, not giant steps. If it turns out that you missed it, just go back to the drawing board. If it turns out that you were right, then you would have learned something. And in time, you will get to the place where you are able to trust when you are led in a particular way. It takes time for it. Don't get so caught up in a voice you hear that if you miss it, you become discouraged and unable to trust anything that you hear from that point forward because that can also happen. You thought you heard something. You discovered that wasn't God. And now you, now you don't have confidence in anything you're hearing. Anybody experienced that before? Yeah, yeah, I know you have. Now, in the case of the group of believers who recently received the Holy Spirit, it did not really matter to them whether the leading was God or not because they were only testing it for the purpose of learning. Therefore, they were not under some self-induced pressure to make it be God's leading, as some try to do. Some people try to squeeze a square peg into a round hole rather than admit that it doesn't fit. And therefore, it can't be God leading them. A good practice to employ while you are learning to hear from God is to write down what you hear. If you think you're hearing something from God, write it down. If you're afraid to write it down, you know why? Because you're afraid you might be wrong. Write it down because you want to test it. I do this now. I've been doing this for many years. Write down what you hear. Date it. And even put a time down, the time that you heard it. I do that even today. This will help you to learn whether or not you are hearing from God. I've always done this. Amen. It's a good thing to do. I have some things written down that the Lord spoke to me before I started preaching. I started preaching in 73. I got something, I I remember, I was thinking about this yesterday. 
I was on the bus, the city bus, on the way to church when the Lord spoke to me something about me preaching. I wrote it down. I still have it. So now that's 51 years ago. Isn't that something? I keep, the, I keep things. I could take you through my stuff. I got things written down. The Lord spoke to me on all kinds of things, about all kinds of things, in all kinds of situations. But I write it down for a purpose. One time, he told me that uh, a, a, this minister was going to get sick and was going to die from his sickness. And I wrote it down. But I didn't write it down because I said, oh, I wrote it down. I'm going to test it just like I test anything else. I just wrote it and left it. Closed it up. I didn't talk about it. Didn't speak to anybody about it. You're not supposed to speak to people to tell everybody everything anyway. Amen. Learn to keep your mouth closed. Even if he is speaking to you. Amen. Learn to shut up. <laughs> the secret thing belongs to the Lord. It's the things he revealed that belong to us. That's why, it's, that's why it's called a secret. If God wants you to tell everybody, if he wants everybody to know, you tell them. Keep your mouth closed. So I waited. Matter of fact, I forgot about it. I didn't want to think about that. One time it came to my mind after a few years, uh, and I said, you know what? Because the, I can tell you exactly what he said. He called the person's name to me. He said, in the next few years, he's going to get sick and will succumb to his illness and death. Then he went on and told me, this, this is why, and told me some other thing beyond that. So after, I don't know, five or six years or so, I, um, that's the only, I thought about it again. And I, I said, well, nothing's happened so far. And I said, well, maybe I miss God. See, that's why I write things down. So I could test it. I said, maybe I miss God. In fact, to be honest with you, I hoped I hadn't missed him. Because I sure didn't want to see that happen. But a few years later, it happened just like he said. And when I heard that this minister was dead, I ran, then I ran, that's when I went back to all of my notes searching for it. And I found, what, I found it. I got it dated when he said it and everything. I still have it. But I, I did that to test it. I didn't do that to go around and say, hey, Y'all see who I am? Oh, God tell me that it's none of your business. But I do, you know, when you're learning to be led by the Spirit of God, write things down. If you think you're hearing something, write it down. And let's test it. Don't, don't just go, well, I had a dream. So what? The Word of God warns us not to, you know, give heed to dreams which you cause yourself to dream, which you cause to be dreamed. You, I, we, we'll talk about that another time, maybe as a part of this, lesson, uh, this teaching, because I think people need to understand. How do I know my dream was from God? What is his message to me? What did I use to judge it? Well, God deals with me in dreams. So what? What does that mean? He deals with a lot of people in dreams. 
He deals with me in dreams. But what does that mean? That doesn't mean he wants me depending upon my dreams to know that he's leading me. Are y'all here? Y'all went home. Sometimes we have to be quiet. So date it and, and put the time down maybe and put it aside. I have, I have things written down that the Lord spoke to me many years ago. Amen. Now listen, remember I told you that sometimes you need to be quiet? When Joseph, when God showed Joseph what he had planned for him, Joseph was 17 years old. Now, I think if Joseph would have kept his mouth closed, he wouldn't have had as much trouble as he had. Now, a lot of preachers think, well, this was God's plan. He wanted him to be sold into slavery and all of this so he could bring him into Egypt. God could have brought him into Egypt a different way. Are y'all here? Y'all went home. But he was, he opened his mouth. The Lord did not read it. God did not speak to him and tell him, tell this to your brothers. I've had the Lord speak to me things and say, do not say anything. Don't say anything. Like in the case I just told you about. I knew that person very well. But the Lord didn't say anything to me about saying anything to them, and I didn't. I never said a single word. It's God's business. If he wants them to know, he can warn them his own way. But it wasn't for me to go tell them. Are you listening to me now? I, I hope I'm helping somebody. Now listen. Joseph was 17 years old when he When, he, when, when the Lord showed him his dream. Now, when Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream, he was 30 years old. Then there were the seven years of plenty. And in the second year of the famine, he revealed himself to his brothers when he was 39 years old. So do not expect everything that God reveals to you to come to pass immediately. It may take some years. One thing is certain, however, if it is God, it will eventually come to pass. Now over the years, I've discovered that a problem area for many in relation to being led by the Spirit of God is when one believes that God told them to do something. It is almost impossible, y'all. Listen, as a pastor for many years, I can tell you this. It is almost impossible. And I, I probably ought to take almost out. It's almost impossible to change people in two conditions, under two conditions. One, they believe God told them something or they've decided they're going to marry somebody. God himself came down and looked at him and tell him that's not me. They wouldn't believe it. And that's really pride. It's the worst kind. It's the stinking spiritual pride. Like I'm so special and so wonderful. Hey Amen. Somebody told me about someone who is a they been. They was in church many years ago. They, 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 they said, "Well, I'm." They said they're a prophet. I said, "Really?" And I'm the president of the United States of America right now. But people start thinking things and believing things about themselves. 
You ain't no prophet because you had no dream and it came to pass. The only one profiting right now is the enemy. He's, a, he's the prophet. P-R-O-F-I-T off of your ignorance. Stop thinking so highly of yourself. That may even be your calling. But you don't just walk in an office. Y'all here, y'all went home. Now, I discovered this is a problem in relation to people being led by the Spirit of God. When one believes that God told them to do something. However, we must also realize that it is, that it is possible to do, quote, the works of God and be in the flesh. Amen. You can be in the flesh, preaching, witnessing, teaching, talking to somebody, trying to help them. You can be in your flesh the whole time. Amen. Amen. Just because you want to do something is not an indication that God wants you to do it. As a rule for myself, if there's something that I really want to do and I believe God is speaking to me to do it, I'll back away from it or I'll take slower steps so that I can know and be sure before I step. And, and listen, this has worked very well for me. I have never made a major decision in our church or anything that didn't work out. Amen. Amen. Ever. How is that? Because I'm smart? No. Not because I'm smart. I may not be so smart. It don't have anything to do with my being smart. It has to do with my being careful and willing to take my time and not be in a hurry Come out, the Lord told me, the Lord told me and start rushing doing things. Are you here? You went home already. I'm, I'm coming in in a few minutes. So just because you desire to do something doesn't mean that God told you to do it. We need to be very careful in, in these cases. What you want to do may be geared by your own personal ambition. And you've got to get to the point where you know the difference between your personal ambition and the leading of the Spirit. Amen. It's better to pull back until you're sure. Like I heard someone say many years ago, I'd rather be three steps behind the Lord than one step in front of him. If it's God, you'll still have the leading. If it's not God, you would have saved yourself both time and vain labor. Because if you go out here, call yourself doing the work that God didn't ordain, it's in vain. You're not getting no reward for that. Amen. Whatever it's costing you in money and time, that's loss for you. Amen. You can't just jump out and run out here to my, I'm doing the work for God. Are you? You're doing the work for you. And because it has something to do with church, you're calling it a work for God. Hello, somebody. So it's better for you to pull back until you're sure. And you don't want to be hasty. Don't be too hasty to do, quote, a work for the Lord, nor to tell others what God told you to do. That's what happened with this brother I was talking about earlier. The Lord put a word in his mouth. You can tell that when the Holy Ghost, look at his attitude. You can tell, 
You don't even have to open the Bible yet. Just, just tell by his attitude that that's not the spirit of God. But that happens with a lot of people. They feel like they are being held back. They hold it up. I mentioned, I've heard people talk about that from other churches. I left because they was holding back my ministry. If somebody can hold back your ministry, you ain't got one. Say that again, Pastor Home. Why, thank you, believe I will. I said, if somebody can hold back your ministry, you ain't got one. Ain't nobody holding back your ministry. As you got ants in your pants. But I load up on the can of raid. You got ants around here, I'm going to spray you. You don't come tell me you, you're ready. I had the same brother, same brother. Okay. I said, listen, I know what I'm doing. I don't need you to come tell me you're ready. Let the Lord tell me you're ready. I mean, how many students go to the teacher and say, I'm ready to be promoted. A teacher may say, not according to your test scores. <laughs> Go have a seat. In fact, have two of them. Now, now here's something else. It's not always good to share with others what you believe the Lord is telling you. But sometimes there is safety in it. Sometimes when you share with others what you believe the Lord is telling you to do, you will get criticized. Don't allow that to bother you. They may even be right. Years ago, when we were preparing to start our child of our, our Kingdom Kids, our child development center. We went to look at a building, number one. We went to look at a building. And I heard that someone had made a comment, a, a comment doubting whether or not we should be putting money into that building at that time. I don't usually take into account the comments of others necessarily, but I once heard a minister say, if you ever get criticized, the first thing you should do is stop and see if there's any truth to it. If there is, then make the adjustment. So wanting to be right in this situation, I talked to the Lord about what I had heard. I wanted to be sure I wasn't stepping too fast. I asked him, Lord, am I missing you? Don't be afraid to ask him that. The Lord asked me, showed me that I was not missing him and began to talk to me about why this move was according to his will and in his perfect plan. We went into the building that we were interested in. Our desire was to lease the building because we were not in a position at that time to buy the building. The owner, however, was interested in selling the building. As we walked through, I simply stopped in the middle of the floor and said to the Lord, Lord, if you want us here, put us here. I ain't going to go through all these changes trying to believe and all that. You want us here, put us here. That is the extent of my praying for that building. Further, I never said another word to the Lord about that building at that time. Now, we did lease the building for a little while. And while leasing, the owner came back again and made us an offer that we could not refuse. By that time, we were in a better position, and the time was right to move. See, God wanted us to have it all the time, but I wanted to make sure that my steps were ordered of the Lord. You have to move in God's timing. You cannot do everything 
overnight. It takes time to grow a tree. Too many people destroy their lives and or injure themselves spiritually as far as ministry is concerned by taking steps out of God's timing based on their own personal ambitions. And I, we saw that happen just a few years ago. The Lord, somebody said the Lord told them and moved, they moved away and the Lord told them this, that, and the other. And then I was walking and praying in one of my prayer walks and I very definitely heard from the Lord. And he said, that's not the plan. That's not my plan. What he did was not my plan. What he's doing is not my plan. He was deceived by that spirit. And what he was talking to me about at that time was a spirit that Brother Hagin talked about. The Lord told him years earlier because he was telling the Lord, he said, Lord, it seems like sometimes when I do, seem like when I'm doing things sometimes, it seems like I know you're leading me and I'll do something that, and nobody responds or something when I'm ministering. And other times, he said, I just know it's you, but, but it doesn't seem to work out. And other times, it's, it's spot on. He said, the Lord told him, there's two reasons why that happens. Number one, when it comes to ministering to people, they have a will. He said, it's me revealing it to you. But if they don't, move and respond to you, that's on them. That's their will. See, God is not going to violate a person's will. Amen. Are you here? Amen. He'll let you go on if you insist on it. So uh, he said the second reason, he said there is a spirit whose voice is very similar to the voice of prophecy. And many have heard that voice and thought it was the Holy Spirit leading them. But in reality, it was a demon, an evil spirit. Because the devil will take advantage of people, well-meaning people. Which brings me to the last thing I want to tell you, because this happened to me this morning. When I woke this morning, I was, I was praying. You know, I was... Uh, I, you know, I worship and all of that. But I was praying, and the Lord said this to me. How is it, and he wanted me to say this, bring this up to you. How is it that well-meaning people can pray and ask God for direction and still be misled? That's a good question, isn't it? How is it that that happens? There are a number of things that causes that. One, and I, ain't gonna, I can't give you all the reasons today, but here's one, here's a couple. Here's one reason why that happened. People pray with their minds already made up what they're going to do. And what they're looking for is God to do something spectacular to change it. I, uh, years ago, years ago, back in the 90s, uh, this man and his wife left, left our church. And I was downtown and ran into him sometime later. And I said to him, brother, the Lord didn't speak to you and tell you to leave our church. That was, you were moved by your emotions. He looked at me and said, that's true. He said, that's true, you're right. But now, whatever the Lord tells us, we're, we're willing to do it. And by that time, he had joined another church and all that. He said, whatever the Lord tells us to do, by now, he said, now, whatever the Lord tells us 
meaning him and his wife, to do, we'll do it. I didn't tell him anything. I just said within myself, you'll never hear from God about it. You'll never hear from him. Why? He already said out of his own mouth that he knew that he had did something based on his emotions. Why do you need God to tell you to fix that? He will never hear, never hear from God about it. And he will stand before the judgment seat of Christ about that same thing. And if he said, Lord, I was, you know, I was willing, but I, you know, I asked you. Yeah, but you already knew that I didn't move you. So sometimes people have their mind made. Like people say, I'm leaving. I've got to pray about leaving the church. I've seen some people, well-meaning people. Something happened, they got to go pray. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. And I'll bring it, I may bring it next time to you so I can share a little bit more with you. Because the Lord gave me this thing about people doing that. And he called it leaders in darkness. How they pray and then they turn to their own darkness for the answer. They pray, but they turn to their emotions for the answer. They pray but they keep going by how they feel. They pray, but they're influenced by other people. And some people are just not leaders. They are followers. Some people are not strong, easily influenced by other people, especially when they're friends. Sometimes people pray but influential others have persuaded them that they should do this or that. And I just made one mention of leaving church. It could be anything. People mean well. Pray and ask God for direction and then make moves thinking that the Lord spoke to them and it turns out wrong. What did you do to test that voice? What did you do to test that leading? What did you do to check and test that which you felt on the inside? If you are unwilling to put it to the test, then you are willfully deceived. you are certainly easily in a position where you can be deceived. Did you get anything out of that? Amen. Father, we thank you once again for your holy word. I certainly thank you for utterance that I received today. You wanted to say things, and you did. And it, it, it brought light to many of your people. People here and people that will be watching later. Thank you for the light. Thank you for your word. My desire and my heart is for people to be in your will. To be right. Yeah, I understand. I got it. Thank you. Praise your holy name. And so I thank you for it. In, in the name of Jesus. Now I need to tell you something because the Lord told me just now to tell you. I gave you, I told you something about someone while I, I was praying, the Lord said, that's not my plan and all of that. Remember that? When my walk was completed, when I got back home, I asked the Lord, I said, well, what's going to happen? When a person, what happens? And you can take this for everybody. What happens if you just do something, some work that God didn't ordain? The Lord said to me, what is going to happen is what 
I said in my word, every plant that my father have not planted shall be rooted up. If God didn't plant it, sooner or later, it's going to be rooted up. If you started a work and it's you and your ambition, your zeal, and not the Holy Ghost, no matter how convinced you were and no matter how sincere you are, it's going to be nothing eventually. It's going to be rooted up because it has to be. God can only breathe on and give life to that which he has ordained. Lift your hands and let's give him praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God.